I'm Wes Newton, I'm living in Oklahoma City. I was raised and went to Moore High School and, and throughout my grades I went through Moore. I graduated in 81 and I got a scholarship, special scholarship to uh, USCO, University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma. So I went there to get an education. But I started art probably because my dad dabbled with painting and so I'd always be drawing on the side or on the floor or wherever and I just love to draw and then I have friends that would draw so instead of going out to the playgrounds or sometimes on a rainy day we'd be drawing we'd be drawing monsters you know superheroes whatever and it just never went away from me I just I kept doing it and developing it and never knew what exactly I'd do with it but I just knew at some point in high school like, yeah, I want to do art I'm going to probably be a commercial artist because I had no idea what to do with it so uh, in uh, uh, after 81, I graduated. I went to USAO. I uh, started there, and you get a rounded education there. You do all kinds of things. But I started getting into the watercolors first thing. I enjoyed watercolors. So I ended up being a, a pretty good watercolor student and enjoyed that. So, But it was, became very challenging. Even later on years, I still wat did watercolors, but it, was, it got to where it was so much more intimidating, more difficult. So. And oil painting in college, I, I couldn't stand the, the oil paints. I ate my lunch. So, but in a lot of things in life, it's about attitude. So, probably about the third year, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to let oil defeat me. I'm going to learn how to do oil. So, with the change of attitude, I started picking it up and learning. And, and eventually, after college, uh, the oil started picking up, and gaining speed, where the watercolor started kind of fading out and so uh, I found that I loved doing oil painting and then I slowly got introduced to uh, plain air so I would learn I'd go to Colorado to certain events and do some plain air work and we we did a lot of plain air in the summer at college as well so I, it, it was kind of introduced then and uh, always loved being out in the mountains so that was kind of a, a good thing for me and, and I had a professor Hoss Howard just loved the guy, and he, he was really inspiring. Uh, he had, you know, pushed me to enter some shows in Oklahoma and the local areas, so I had to enter shows and I had to win some uh, ribbons and awards, and that kind of sparks the interest. You know, that kind of makes you like, well, this is fun, this is fun. I do remember in third grade, I won first place in a uh, historical drawing at school and got a big, nice plaque, and, you know, those things just feed you. I was always the artist in grade school. Uh, I draw things on the side of the paper when I'm done with my homework, and the teachers would always look at it. And I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna be in trouble on that," but they'd always compliment me. Oh, this you're really good. This is really nice. So the compliments bet it. But so I just always loved. It. I didn't know what else to do. I was raised as a carpenter. I knew I didn't want to do that for for a living because I, I just want to be creative. So art was definitely going to be my direction. So about a year after college, you know, being at home with the parents and trying to get my art going, doing the local shows, it wasn't paying enough, so I decided to follow my dad in, in footsteps of being a firefighter. He was an Oklahoma City firefighter, so I joined the fire department in Oklahoma City because it allowed me to have the 24 hours on, 24 hours off business that allowed me to do my art. So I would continue to do my art and, and Really, I love my art. If people say, what do you do for a living? Well, I was a firefighter for a living, but I live for art. So that's the combination of the two was, was uh, worked pretty good. Um, but yeah, I definitely would have rather been an artist full time. But the, the check was nice. So I, I enjoyed those checks coming in permanently and I could do some traveling and, and still paint. So it was uh, it was challenging, but it was, it was rewarding in its own way. But after I retired in uh, 2012, I've been painting pretty much full time after, since then, and doing a lot more plein air in in uh, Jackson, Wyoming. The Teton Grand Tetons love that. I had a group there that we just did a lot of work there and did a lot of won some of the shows. And then uh, also in uh, Tennessee, uh, ten, uh, I can't think of the name of the, the town of Tennessee now, but. Uh, Plain air is a different challenge. It was a different beast because even though I was pretty well established as a uh, artist in the studio and producing works there, it's a different beast going out in the field and, and painting on location because you're 
you're racing the sun, you're racing shadows, you're fighting mosquitoes, bugs, other animals. I've had a black bear come up to my easel and, and check it out. So, I, of course, I backed away with my camera. I got some great shots of that. But So, there's, it, it's fun. I mean, it's an experience to be out there on plain air. It's just it, 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 something special. But it does help translate in the studio. Um, the things that inspire me, I have too many artists that inspire me because I can go so many different directions. Uh, I did study under Jim Wilcox. Uh, he, he had a gallery in, in uh, Jackson Hole. That was probably my first experience in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, doing his workshop. Then uh, Wayne Wolf was also kind of a guest artist with him. They're both pretty West artists in Oklahoma City at the museum. They have the big show that they're part of. And then Scott Christian, uh, I became friends with him for a, for a period and, and went up there and painted with him a lot and did a couple of his workshops. Scott Christensen was a very big influence on me. I really enjoyed uh, getting to know him and uh, just learned a lot of basics from him. He had a heart for teaching people and, and sharing his his understanding. But So he was a big inspiration in, in what I was doing and simplifying some things. But... Um, but just being in the Teton, that's one of my favorite places, the Teton Mountains, just beautiful. And, and eventually I started doing wildlife. And, you know, some of the wildlife, I'd do a large landscape, but then I'd put in a, a, a bull moose or an elk, kind of help, you know, it's just a part of the nature, and, and it kind of hit two worlds, the wildlife as well as landscape. So, But landscape was my favorite. But then eventually I'd do some more just um, studies of the wildlife. But... So that was a period, and that kind of slowed down. But in the last few years, I've really gotten in, I've been interested more in old structures, the the barns, the old houses. When I'm traveling, I'd see an old house, I'd have to stop and go in and see if I can walk in if it's feasible. You know, if it's not trespassing, just just enjoyed the old feel of just knowing that place had memories, it had stories. If you could just tell them, so I started painting some of the old houses and old barns and. And so that's just, it's been more recent. So, and in coming out to this show, I've seen some beautiful places. I'm like, they were very inspiring. I'd like to come back and this way sometime for that very reason. But uh, art's been always something special. It's something that uh, you can ex express. And when I'm painting in the studio, I feel like I'm going right back to where I was when I was painting. I never really painted anything unless I've experienced it. Uh, so, and, and I did a lot of photography, you know, when I go to the mountains, I could paint, you know, in two weeks I'd paint 24 paintings, but to me a lot of times if I'm going to have a day off, I'm not going to paint I'm, in the mountains, I'm going to go photograph because I can fill my camera with all kinds of good shots and, and hiking into the mountains. So that was my biggest source was the photography, but everything I paint is my experience. Even if it's wildlife and there's times I'd borrow some pictures of, from a book or something to fit in something, in a, I'd see a landscape of mine and say, that just needs a grizzly. So I'd paint in a grizzly, you know, and it'd be a small part of the painting, but it would still be uh, someone else's and I didn't like that. So eventually there's a grizzly center in West Yellowstone. I took a lot of shots of grizzlies. So most of the wildlife in my pieces were always something I experienced. I still want it to be original and I want the experience to be original and uh, to share that. And uh, so, there's a, it's just unlimited what's out there, and as an artist, you just can't, you, while you're painting on one, you're still thinking of the next one. It's just exciting to get to the next painting, and uh, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. For those who can really make a living at it, it's, it, it's a dream come true. I, it's a struggle for me. It's difficult, but um, it's always something that uh, I wouldn't trade for the world, so... So, anyway, my website is, uh, you can find it at www.newtonartstudio.com. Uh, I, I try to keep that updated. Uh, and there's con contact information there. My, you know, my website is, uh, yeah. has the biography, has the, the large works, small works. Um, uh, I know my, uh, my email is uh, artbywes at att.net. 